Hi, this is the video abstract for a paper Oh eight ten dot four three four oh, which I did in conjunction with Martin Benio, and my name is S. Vermani. And um, the motivation for the paper was the issue of fault tolerance in quantum computing. So if I draw a very naive picture of a noise line, so imagine you're trying to build a quantum computer, and you have some noise which we characterise from zero percent. To 100 percent. Then, uh, an important question is: um, for what levels of noise in your basic components, your quantum gates and your quantum bits, can you still do quantum computation? So, a seminal body of work has resulted in the idea of a fault tolerance threshold, which uh, I'll use the symbol eta for. And um, this body has shown that um, this body of work has shown that uh, for a large variety of noise models, provided the noise level is less than a certain threshold, um, eta, then you can still do quantum computation using clever error correction techniques. Um, the motivation for our work is what happens above this threshold, and in particular, how much noise do you require before you enter a regime which is so noisy that it can be efficiently simulated classically. Classically. So um, the idea would be that um, if you could figure out the value C such that noise is so high that you can be efficiently simulated classically, then that would be an upper bound for the quantum threshold, provided that uh, quantum computers are truly better than classical computers, which is something that we assume. So there's been um, a variety of papers on uh, understanding this classical threshold, for want of a better, better term. And um, most of the results today have tried to focus on fairly general architectures for a quantum computer. Um, but our motivation was to try and improve the results by actually specialising to particular examples of fault-tolerant proposals for which thresholds are believed to be um, fairly high. So, a famous example of a fault tolerance, sorry for that brief interview, um, famous, probably the most famous example of a fault tolerance scheme is the post-selected scheme proposed by Mill, which uh, appeared in Nature, for which he conjectured for a certain type of depolarizing noise model, um, which uh, he parameterized by gamma, that the noise threshold could be as high or even higher than 3%. So what we do is that we utilize the fact that this scheme and actually many others have very specific structures. So they bring universality to the computation by using a special resource, for instance, a uh, so-called pi over 8 gate. Now, um, the way that they use these gates is that they um, create a resource, a state, and then they teleport that state using a teleportation circuit involving X and Z measurements. Um, they, they teleport this state into a big ancilla state, which is effectively uh, a very large um, error correcting code. And so what we do is we ask how can we apply noise to this circuit such that um, the circuit can be effectively be represented by a situation where this resource is not something like a pi over 8 gate, but in fact is, is one of the so-called Clifford resources, um, which can be efficiently simulated classically by the well-known um, gottesman nil theorem. So we find that um, using some actually very simple attacks on this circuit, we can get upper bounds to, to a threshold 
for schemes involving such circuits, which, say for, for, for NIL's depolarizing noise model, give an upper bound of approximately 13%. Okay. And um, the, the attacks we've applied so far are actually quite simple, and our hope is that um, by trying to develop more sophisticated attacks on um, the rest of the, the circuit, we'll be able to improve, improve these bounds, um, well, reduce these upper bounds um, further. Thanks.